Change your diet, change your life, change the planet. Today I want to talk to you about running shoes. Very, very important topic. When you buy a pair of running shoes, most manufacturers will say that you can get between three and four hundred miles out of those shoes, running miles that is. And I've always thought that this is a little strange because I've had shoes that I've worn for fifteen hundred miles and they're perfectly good. All right? They, the cushioning is good, the upper is good, and I've had two pair of shoes now last me about 1,500 miles with no problems. In fact, one of the reasons the shoe companies tell you to switch to a new shoe is that you, you know, flatten out the cushioning. But now that we have the minimal running movement and people are going barefoot and running with minimal cushioning, when you've beaten the crap out of the padding in your shoe, you've now turned it into a minimal running shoe, keep running on it. And because you're going to gradually transition into that lesser cushioning. So essentially you're easing into minimal running just by wearing your shoes longer. But here's the rub. You don't want to run on the same pair of shoes all the time. You want to switch them up. I have five pair of training shoes and I have four pair of racing shoes. Why? Well you may think different terrain, you know he's running in trails, he's running on a track, he's running in, in uh, on the road, you know what, what have you. Well Yes, that's true, but I'll wear my road shoes on the trails, and I'll wear my trail shoes on the roads. I wear my trail shoes on the track. I wear my track shoes on the trail, which is what I'm doing right now. Because different shoes cause you to run differently. They move your body position, because one shoe is going to be a little bit firmer here, another shoe is going to be firmer there, and it's going to be more comfortable to run in midfoot. This one's going to push you a little bit back in the shoe. This one's going to put you up on your toes. This one's going to have strong sidewalls. This one's not. Uh, this one's a little bit wider, lets my toes spread out. This one keeps me nice and snug. And all of these different shoes with their different forms and fits cause me to change my running stride. So today I'm running in my Nikes, tomorrow I'll probably run in my Asics, the day after that I'm going to run in my Montreals, and this is going to cause me to have a different running stride, a different running form slightly every time I run. And I think this is really crucial because what most people do is they wear one pair of shoes and they run on one kind of terrain, and you can develop repetitive stress injuries. But if you're always changing your shoes, so you've got different amounts of cushion, different amounts of stability, uh, different fit, different feel, you're going to change how you run and that's going to cause your stride to change. And this is going to allow you to put uh, force on different parts of the body. Maybe one shoe would hurt the balls of your foot if you ran in it too much. But if you run on it maybe twice a week, that's fine. Another shoe might hurt your knees if you run on it too much, but running on it twice a week is fine. So you build stronger stabilizer muscles, you learn to be more adaptable with your form, your shoes last longer, so you can have a couple pair of shoes that can get up into the 1500 mile range, as long as they have good uppers, and you reduce injury. So change up your shoes on a regular basis. Every day you run, change your shoes, if you can afford to. And you don't need to go out and buy the most expensive trainers. My shoes, generally I get for 50 bucks or less on East Bay. Not eBay, but eastbay.com. They have closeouts on running shoes. And I get all my shoes there. They're inexpensive. That way I can have five pair of trainers for $30 to $50 a piece. My racing shoes also are like $30 to $60 bucks to get racing shoes. And uh, I can keep rotating. So today, I'm running in my Nike Waffle Racer 8s. I love these shoes. They're my new favorite trail racing shoe. If you were to look at the literature for this shoe, it would tell you that it's a track or cross country shoe. Not a trail shoe and definitely not a long distance shoe. But I ran the US Trail Marathon Championships in these shoes last year. I'm doing a 15 mile mountain run in these shoes right now. But yet they're designed for track and cross country, short races. And the reason that I love them, the cushioning is up near the front of the shoe. It has a very minimal heel, almost no heel whatsoever, so most of the cushioning is under my arch and my forefoot. So I can really get up on the toe, it's got nice traction, they're very lightweight, they're like 5.6 ounces. The uppers are really durable, a nice strong synthetic durable upper, so they can withstand the trails. And they're fast. Also, I think it's a great idea to train in your racing shoes at least twice a week. 
So I'm out doing a trail run and I'm doing hill repeats and I'm wearing my racing shoes. This is a 15 mile run and I'm wearing like cross country running flats. But because of the cushioning, because I wear these shoes once or twice a week, my feet, my calves, my soleus, my hips, my body can handle it. They're used to it. There's nothing worse than getting into a race and you haven't worn those shoes in a few months and now you're in a different running position and you're going to stress tendons, ligaments, bones, and muscle that you haven't been using. So by using your racing shoes to train a couple times a week, especially for your speed work, you get your body used to handling that position, that aggressive forward position. So I'm doing hill repeats today and it's the last thing on earth that I want to do. So I got my aggressive shoes on because they make me feel fast, they make me feel confident, and it's a great way to break my legs in for a long run on these shoes. Because coming up in November again, I'm gonna do the US uh, Trail Marathon Championships in these shoes yet again. So check them out. So here they are. You can also see my ankle brace that I'm wearing because I've got a, a messed up ankle. But you'll notice the cushion is thick through here and thick through here. The heel is really tiny. It's barely got any heel at all. So most of the, the cushioning is under the arch and the forefoot. They've also got some nice lugs on the bottom to give you good traction. It's my new favorite trail shoe. So everybody out there trying to sell you a super protective, heavy monster of a trail shoe, uh, you're better off in a lightweight, aggressive shoe that's got a lot of cushioning, strong cushioning in the front, because these guys protect me from the rocks and the roots, and because they don't have a big heel, I'm less likely to roll an ankle, because I'm not landing on my heel, and I don't have all that wobble material underneath if I do catch a heel. So these guys, basically, my heel's not touching the ground at all. Um, maybe at the end of a stride, but by that point I've already got my balance. So, rotate your shoes, wear your shoes longer than you thought you could because they become minimal shoes, and train in your racers a couple times a week. Alright?